Hi, hello. It's Krista. <laughs> Welcome to the morning commute. Oh my gosh, hair in my eyelashes. Um, excuse the background noise. It's currently raining, freezing rain. I don't know. It's fine. It's not that bad. Um, it is a winter wonderland right now, though, which is exciting. But anyway, to the point of this video is this morning I was watching a video put out yesterday by Don Michelle about tarot burnout and it just oh it just it just struck a chord with me and got me kind of thinking about as you could tell by the title of this video the relationship between tarot burnout and neurodivergent burnout which is something, neurodivergent burnout is something uh, commonly experienced by any neurodivergent person, but prevalent in late diagnosed individuals, such as myself. And the, I suppose definition I have in my head, I recommend looking it up as with anything else I talk about because I am not coming at this as an expert, I am coming at this as someone also learning, but from what I understand from my own research into it, neurodivergent burnout is a special kind of burnout that comes about basically from having, feeling like you have to mask your neurodivergent qualities. And so the reason it's so prevalent and uh, late diagnosed people is because, at least I know for myself, I've been walking around for however many years thus far, kind of unconsciously masking things about myself and or like ways I need to do things, which is going to take a really big toll on a person, you know, existing in life trying to stop or minimize certain behaviors because you don't have an explanation for it or a way to explain it to others, exhausting. And so I have been dealing with neurodivergent burnout for quite, quite a bit now, but it has really kind of taken peak form, I would say, since the start of holiday season. And by that, I mean like Thanksgiving. I kind of felt like since Thanksgiving, I feel like I've been kind of almost playing this game of catch up with myself where um, just because of all the social pressures that come with the holiday season, it required a lot of, or felt like I should say, it brought on a lot of masking tendencies for me. Because as much as, as much as I, you know, am learning about unmasking and doing this process of unmasking, it's not easy. It's not easy when you exist in this world where you've never had a label and no one has put this label with you. And, you know, maybe until now if you're discussing it. Um, and I, I, something I've noticed should I t talk more about neurodivergent burnout? Okay, yes, I should. Because the way it manifests can be similar to just kind of like a regular burnout, but there are some key features just based on every individual, every individual neurodivergent person. But I know for me, it looks like I have lost a lot of my ability to uh, regulate my own emotions. Um... I easily lose interest in things that are big interests of mine. And I wouldn't say losing interest, it's just like there's, there's just like this almost this uh, like depressive feeling that comes with at least how I'm experiencing the neurodivergent burnout of like that idea of kind of like, well, what's the point? And I know, you know, it's this thing of like, that's just how my body's reacting. So even if mentally I know like, Here's the point. Um, it's just like the 
motivation isn't there. Um, I find myself getting tired more easily. Woo, squirrel. Oh my gosh. It's okay. The squirrel's okay. Don't you hate that? How they just like run in the road. Come on, guys. Anyways. Um, anything else? Uh, oh, and, and like socializing is much, much more taxing. So those are kind of, I, I do, again, I, if this is resonating with you, I recommend looking it up because there's other ways it can manifest. That's just personally how it shows up for me. And so I wanted to talk about the tie between that experience and tarot burnout because for me, there's a tie between the two because you know, tarot is my special interest and one of the features of neurodivergent burnout is losing interest or really an ability to interact with something like a special interest and I've been feeling that heavily which is so heartbreaking because I know how much I love this and I know how much joy it can bring me and it's when I, I am kind of dealing with this other end, it's kind of like, it doesn't feel like there's really a way to kind of help this, this aspect, the tarot burnout. Um, losing track of my thoughts. So, Yes, so I definitely, of course, I'm going to link Don Michelle's video below if you have not seen it. I recommend giving that a watch uh, because it just was a good I don't, a conversation. I really liked hearing her thoughts on it and I just thought it was so interesting or I think it is interesting the different ways tarot burnout can be experienced and my point in talking about this right now is recognizing that for me there is an innate connection, at least right now, to neurodivergent burnout. Because something that was just kind of making me, like, a, a, a analogy Don Michelle used that was, that almost made me, like, kind of laugh out loud, um, was she related, how, like, she, she kind of recognized tarot burnout was coming on when it felt like tarot became habitual instead of ritual, that it almost was like, turning into like brushing her teeth a habitual thing like brushing her teeth and what was funny about it to me is that analogy made so much sense to me except for the fact that because there's this tie to neurodivergent burnout and for me routine is so important how I can help myself through neurodivergent burnout is giving myself the routines I need that in a way, for me, when I'm feeling this burnout, I have to make tarot like brushing my teeth. And so a good example I have for this is um, throughout this feeling of the neurodivergent burnout, which then kind of translates into tarot burnout because Again, like I was saying, a feature of the neurodivergent burnout is finding it hard to interact with special interests. Um, the one thing that has stayed consistent is I do a tarot reading for myself every single morning and I journal it almost the same way every single morning. And so in a way, it is like brushing my teeth. And it was this realization of like, how cool is that that, you know, for one person, it's a signal of like, something's not working here. But then for me, it's like, oh my gosh, I do like, it has to be like brushing my teeth. That's the perfect thing. <laughs> I just thought that was so interesting. And so kind of how I've been working through that is by doing the teeth brushing, you know, it, for to keep using the analogy and letting go of the extra. And that's where I think the common thread is, is Dawn Michelle talked about how she has just kind of been letting it be a four of swords moment of just giving it a rest. And sometimes that's, you know, a part of a tarot practice is knowing when to give it a rest for a little bit. And so I wanted to talk about this today because I just feel like I've been going through something similar, even if it's a different flavor, um, where I've been giving the extras a bit of a rest. 
but that to say that I have this different angle of it being combined with the neurodivergent burnout and there are certain things I need to do for myself with that that make it look a little bit different perhaps because while I'm finding it hard to engage with special interests something I've been discovering is rest for me looks like allowing myself to dive into special interest in whatever way feels approachable to me at the moment. So I felt really discouraged for a long time because when I am not kind of in the throes of burnout, I pretty much, I'm waking up, I'm doing tarot, I'm going to work, I'm coming home, I'm doing tarot, and like, oh, it brings me so much joy, it brings me so much joy. So even if it's like I'm doing three to four readings for myself in a day, it's like I was getting a lot out of it and enjoying myself, even if it just was for fun. And so it felt really disheartening when it just, I didn't feel like doing that anymore. It was hard to get myself to do that because any sort of introspection, like deep introspection is just, it's too hard right now. I can't get myself to really like focus and to be blunt, care. That's just kind of is what it is. And so over the last few weeks, I've discovered that it's not about the rest for me still needed to involve engaging with this special interest in some way because Otherwise, it's just like the sad shows in town, you know what I mean? And that wasn't helpful. So, what I've discovered and been finding so much joy in, which is so exciting, is I've been doing a lot of learning about tarot, reading about tarot. So not necessarily, I, I do my reading in the morning because that's my, my, that's my routine, the brushing the teeth that I need to do. And then, you know, go to work, have my day, whatever it is, come home and not adding any sort of pressure on myself to interact with cards otherwise in any way. But I've had these tarot books that I've just kind of like collected, you know, as we all do. And for a long time, reading was just really hard for me. Sitting still and reading was hard. But since I've discovered that um, I really just need to be in motion in order to read, I got one of those walking pad treadmills and I walk and I read at the same time. So now I can read. Anyway, that's just like a side note as to, I have these, I've had these books, but haven't read them. Here's why. Not that I need to justify that. Anyway, so what I've been doing is I've just really had an interest now in these books. I've been reading these books. So, um... Like right now I'm reading uh, Through the Forest of Souls, Rachel Pollock's last book she put out. So good, so good. Um, I did the whole thing where I got really into studying the devil card because that's my card of the year. Um, I got the great workbook by Numinous Press and have been filling that out. So it's finding a way for me to engage in a special interest in a new way so it's almost like I wouldn't even call it tarot adjacent it's just that discovering that the thing that was hard for me was doing the readings and really like feeling an ability to care about it and feeling like oh well that's it like oh darn <laughs> now I'm just gonna have sad girl hours for the rest of the night no 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 because I still, like I said, I feel like I'm talking a bit in circles, I apologize, but engaging with the special interest is like a huge piece of advice, a huge way to get out of neurodivergent burnout. And that's not the only thing, but like, it's so restorative for so many neurodivergent people that, and I knew that it was for me, that it was like, I need to find a way to still engage with this. And so, 
I guess I just wanted to come on here and, and talk about this sort of angle as well of, I just was finding it interesting that it's like, I'm going through this period of time too, where, you know, outside of my kind of routine habit, I'm finding it hard to interact with like the cards right now as well, like John Michelle was saying. But that engaging with something that is such a big special interest for me is also really important and really like a big part of me healing the neurodivergent burnout, which for me has just kind of also translated into this idea of tarot burnout. And so I've been doing that by just really kind of learning about tarot without using cards. So reading the books, doing the workbook activities. Um, yeah, deep diving cards. It's, it's been a lot of fun and it, it's just, it's felt good. So I don't know, I guess in case anyone else is experiencing this dual nature of burnout, I thought maybe that would be of some help. Or, I don't know, I just like talking. <laughs> and so I figured I'd talk about it. Anyway, that's all I had to say. So, yeah, that's that. That's all I gotta say, is that there's always, there's a way, there's a way to find, find our ways to the light, I suppose. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. So I hope you're having a wonderful week so far and I'll see you again very soon.